The once serene and peaceful town was suddenly thrust into a terrifying ordeal. Bodies in the cemetery inexplicably resurrected, transforming into bloodthirsty zombies. The culprit of this disaster is a drilling company that exploits underground resources. At a construction site in the town, workers were frantically conducting drilling operations when they unexpectedly bored into a massive cave. Rhodes, in charge, immediately instructed the newcomer, Sarah, to go down and investigate. Armed with a flashlight, Sarah explored the depths and stumbled upon a mummified corpse bound by iron chains. As soon as she emerged, Sarah wasted no time in alerting the authorities. However, Rhodes accused her of acting without authorization, fearing repercussions on the construction schedule. So Rhodes told Sarah to go home and rest and deal with the police herself. Shortly after, Officer McDermott arrived at the scene. Despite McDermott's inquiries, Rhodes lied, claiming it was a misunderstanding, there were no human bodies, just an animal carcass, but McDermott said that since he was here, he had to check it out for himself or he wouldn't leave. Rhodes had no choice but to give McDermott his helmet. But Rhodes turned around and reported the situation to the company. Before McDermott could get down there, he got a call from headquarters telling him to drop the investigation. The project had the support of the current mayor. And with elections looming, any issues were to be avoided, yielding to the pressure from higher-ups. McDermott reluctantly retreated. However, at the construction site's entrance, McDermott coincidentally crossed paths with Sarah who was on her way home. Knowing that Sarah had called the police, McDermott asked her to help him get into the cave. Just as Rhodes was about to resume drilling, a malfunction occurred, sabotaged by Sarah during the repair rush. Seizing the opportunity, McDermott used a rope to descend into the cave, armed with a lighter for illumination. Following the chain, he found the body, at which point the drill started working again. Fearing exposure, Sarah quickly discarded the rope. But Rhodes noticed, upon seeing the exposed electrical wires on the ground, Rhodes instantly understood the situation and delivered a punch to Sarah. As McDermott, below, began removing the corpse's mask, the drilling machine roared back to life. Despite McDermott's desperate cries for help, he was unaware that the seemingly lifeless body behind him had opened its eyes. Defenseless, McDermott was seized by the corpse, attempting to break free but getting a finger bitten off. Unbeknownst to the townspeople, a zombie crisis was silently descending upon the town. In the funeral home, Lauren, a female employee, is handling a recently deceased body when a hand suddenly appears behind her, startling her. It turns out to be the funeral homeowner. The owner informs Lauren that he have to leave for a while and decides to let her handle the upcoming funeral alone. Lauren was very happy to hear that, because it was the best chance for her to perform for her parole period. The boss has just left, and Lauren, who is ready to get back to work, notices that the corpse's eyes have inexplicably opened. Lauren didn't think much of it and immediately closed the dead man's eyes. Soon, Lauren completes the setup of the funeral scene and places the prepared body into the coffin. She then heads to the dressing room with a funeral attire to change. What she doesn't know is that her boss has installed a hidden camera in the room and is obscenely watching Lauren on her mobile phone. However, just as the boss is engrossed, a sudden noise distracts him. The boss was scared and went outside to check but he didn't see anything and thought it was a rat. As he is about to return, the adjacent coffin lid suddenly closes. Before the boss can recover from the shock, something drags him away. When Lauren finishes changing, the family members of the deceased, who came to mourn, ask to see the deceased one last time. However, when Lauren opens the coffin, she discovers the body is missing, thinking it's a prank by the boss. She heads to the basement mortuary to investigate. Instead of finding the body, she discovers the boss's dropped phone on the floor. Carefully, Lauren proceeds to the boss's office. Knocking yields no response, and upon pushing the door, she discovers the boss brutally murdered inside. Meanwhile, the grieving family outside grows impatient, urging Lauren. She, fearing to reveal the horror, tries to come up with excuses to stall. Suddenly, a noise echoes through the corridor, braving her fear. Lauren investigates and witnesses a horrifying scene the deceased person has come back to life. Terrified, Lauren flees. Her screams alert the family upstairs, and they start calling Lauren's name. Unbeknownst to them, they unintentionally attract the attention of the zombies. To prevent the zombies from attacking the family, Lauren steps forward to intervene. Seeing that it doesn't work, Lauren can only step on the zombies' bodies and climb up to inform them to run away. Unbeknownst to her, Cam, the employee in charge of weeding the cemetery just outside, had similarly noticed the anomaly. There seemed to be movement in the graveyard, 
As Kem curiously crouches down, listening intently, a skeletal hand suddenly reaches out and grabs him. In quick succession, several more skeletal hands emerge from the graveyard soil. Kem managed to break free but found that zombies had already covered the entire graveyard. What's even more terrifying is that more zombies are emerging from the ground. Terrified and unsure of what has happened to these corpses, Kem hastily drives his weed removal vehicle, managing to eliminate a few zombies that were in the process of emerging. However, his joy is short-lived as he overturns the vehicle due to hitting a protruding stone. Fortunately, the zombies are not particularly fast. Quickly getting up, Cam runs towards the nearby funeral home and shuts the iron gate, keeping the zombies outside. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lauren has been chased to the first floor by zombies. She was just running into the lobby when she was tackled by zombies that caught up with her. She got bitten by a zombie. In pain, Lauren pushes the zombies away grabs a nearby fire extinguisher, and in front of the mourning family members, kills the reanimated corpse. Clearly unaware of the situation, the family members threaten to complain about Lauren. Fortunately, Kem arrives and informs Lauren that everyone outside has turned into zombies. Lauren, having just killed one of the zombies, isn't surprised. Suddenly, there's a banging on the door. The old man opens the curtain only to find the resurrected zombies outside. Seeing this, Lauren urgently instructs everyone to head to the basement and take refuge in the mortuary where the bodies are stored. However, just as they think they're safe, the cabinets in the mortuary unexpectedly start making noise. To their astonishment, even the corpses inside have come back to life. Lauren reassures everyone not to be afraid, explaining that the cabinets can only be opened from the outside. Unless someone wants to be foolish, zombies cannot get out. However, Cam notices the bite marks on Lauren's body. As a seasoned fan of zombie movies, Cam suggests that getting bitten might lead to turning into a zombie. His words create panic, and the people immediately point their guns at Lauren. Lauren insists she's still lucid and won't turn into a zombie. Cam explains that infection isn't guaranteed, and mutation might occur after death. As they argue over this, unexpectedly, someone recklessly opens one of the cabinets. Jesus damn! What did you do? Man, nothing has stopped. No one in the town knew what had happened. All they knew was that corpses suddenly emerged from the cemetery, attacking the living. The funeral home in the graveyard was the first to be hit, and the occupants found themselves trapped inside. They had mistakenly sought refuge in what they thought was a safe place. Forgetting it was a mortuary, a foolhardy individual opened one of the body storage cabinets, triggering chaos. Seeing zombies about to emerge, the group hurriedly blocked the cabinet door, managing to sever the zombie's arm in the process, but just when they thought the crisis was over, they didn't realize that the arm on the floor had moved on its own. By the time everyone reacted, the arm had already opened the morgue cabinet. Then a zombie came out of it. Lauren grabbed the man's pistol and fired several shots at the zombies, but she didn't realize that zombies should be shot in the head. She emptied her clip and didn't kill the zombies. To make matters worse, the severed hand kept reopening the mortuary cabinet. With no other option, they decided to leave the mortuary. Unfortunately, the last man running was caught by the zombies. Lauren and Cam rushed to help, pulling the man from the zombies' grasp. However, shortly after their escape, they discovered the man's upper body was missing. Outside the door, zombies were on the verge of breaking in, leaving them with no choice but to make a desperate escape. Lauren devised a plan, using the man's body to distract the zombies. While the zombies were distracted, they quietly moved the man's body onto the hearse and scattered the flesh on the ground. When the zombies were attracted, the others took the opportunity to escape from the funeral parlor. Lauren and Cam drove out of here quickly. Meanwhile, at the drilling site, female employee Sarah, having knocked out by the foreman Rhodes for assisting Officer McDermott's investigation, woke up to find herself bound, realizing the potential danger McDermott faced in the cave. Sarah struggled to break free. She reached the site, shut down the drill, and even landed a punch on Rhodes. Sarah told the crowd that there was a policeman down there and that if they kept drilling, people would die. But then a couple of black SUVs suddenly drove up from the construction site. A woman stepped out of the vehicles and Rhodes rushed up to greet her, but it was Dr. Logan, sent by the company. Dr. Logan was sent by the company to investigate because the mayor had been alerted to what was happening at the site. But Rhodes says it's all a misunderstanding and that he has everything under control. Sarah immediately contradicted Rhodes, 
revealing the presence of a corpse and an investigating police officer below. Logan then orders the workers to lift the drill and rescue the policeman, McDermott. McDermott is dying with his finger bitten off by zombies. Luckily, Logan is a doctor, immediately gave McDermott a shot and told the workers to carry McDermott away for treatment, but Sarah was more worried about the body in the cave, but Logan told Sarah to stay out of it and told her to go back and rest for a few days, and promised that the place would be sealed off until the body in the cave was investigated. Sarah had no choice but to leave, but as soon as Sarah left, Logan told Rhodes that the events here must not be leaked, which means Rhodes should silence Sarah. On the other side of town, in the nursing home, the current mayor, Paula, was participating in the next mayoral election, however, outside, a gathering of protesting citizens and Paula's rival, Pops, had formed. This protest was a result of the drilling company contaminating the underground water due to resource extraction, a company Paula had brought to the town to boost the economy. The enraged citizens directed their anger toward her, Pops, inciting the crowd, escalated the emotions of the protesters. Luckily, Paula's assistant Nicole came to the rescue, and they had a chance to leave, but no sooner had they found a place to hide than an extremist protester arrived. Seeing the man's hand in his pocket, Paula's husband, Trey, thought he was going to pull out a gun, so Trey grabbed Paula's gun and fired a warning shot. Tragically, the bullet ricocheted, unintentionally causing the man's death. It turned out that the man only wanted to take out a bottle of contaminated water. When they saw the body on the ground, they panicked. However, to safeguard Paula's election campaign and prevent legal repercussions, they decided against reporting the incident to the authorities, and Trey didn't want to go to jail. So they decided to hide the body until after the election, they dressed the man up as an old man from a home for the elderly and planned to push him out. However, at the entrance, they encountered Paula's competitor, Pops. Fearing exposure, Paula hastily instructed Trey to remove the body while she dealt with Pops. Trey pushes the body into a room, and when he sees no reaction from the elderly, he returns to Paula, but Pops didn't notice anything unusual and left after a while. Unbeknownst to Paula and Trey, the body had undergone a mutation due to exposure to the contaminated water. Meanwhile, Lauren and the others escaped from the funeral parlor, but they accidentally bumped into a man running away in a panic. The man fainted on the spot and woke up later, lying on Lauren's hearse, startled by the nearby corpse, believing Lauren's group to be murderers. He was shocked. Lauren recognizes the man as Jai, the doctor from the sanatorium, and explains to him about the zombie outbreak at the funeral home. Jai remembers that he also met a zombie eating in the woods, that's why he ran into the middle of the road. It seems that the zombie's virus has spread beyond the funeral parlor. Looking at the wound on Lauren's shoulder, Jai decided to take her to the infirmary of the old folks' home to get it patched up. Thus, they set off for the nursing home. At this moment, Paula and the others were preparing to transfer the bodies from the nursing home. However, as soon as they opened the door, they were shocked to find that the previously deceased body had inexplicably come back to life, devouring several elderly residents inside. Startled, they quickly slammed the door shut. Was it just an illusion? To confirm whether the body was truly feasting on people, Paula pulled out her handgun and cautiously opened the door again, only to discover that the zombies had vanished. All that remained were scattered limbs, a clear sign that things had spiraled out of control. Nicole, reaching for her phone to call the authorities, was promptly stopped by Paula. The zombies still had her bullets lodged in their heads, and discovery would mean trouble for her too. So Paula led them to follow the blood trail, but as they walked, Paula realized that Trey wasn't following them, so they had to turn back. When they found a room, Trey suddenly appeared behind them, causing Paula to jump and drop her gun on the floor. Nicole, picking up the fallen handgun, surreptitiously removed the bullets. Unbeknownst to Paula, Paula, who has taken the gun, doesn't realize what Nicole is planning. Nicole caught up with Trey, showing him the extracted magazine. It turns out they've been sleeping together behind Paula's back for a long time. Nicole takes Paula's bullets and plans to use the zombies to destroy Paula and make sure they can be together forever. But Trey didn't want to hurt Paula, and he took Nicole's magazines to give them back to Paula. But just as Trey found Paula, zombies appeared behind Nicole and tackled her to the ground. Paula attempted to shoot, only to discover her gun was empty. Nicole met her demise. Trey, horrified, dropped to the ground, the magazine slipping from his grasp. As the zombies pounced again Paula used the wheelbarrow to ram the zombies into the house and closed the door behind them. Picking up the fallen magazine, Paula loaded her gun, perplexed by its presence on the floor. Trey offered an explanation, suggesting it might have fallen out. Clips don't just fall out, Trey. 
I don't know, Paula, does it really matter right now? Yes! If my gun had been loaded, Nicole wouldn't be dead! Trey remained silent, hiding his true intentions. Paula, armed once again, opened the door, but the zombie had escaped. By the time Paula caught up, the zombie had reached the lobby, ready to attack. Paula urgently called for everyone to retreat and decisively pulled the trigger, but after a few shots, the zombies were still alive. Hearing the gunshots, Lauren and the others, who were tending to wounds, rushed out. And here, Paula, even after emptying her magazine, couldn't bring down the zombies, they were dumbfounded. This thing can't be killed. Seizing the opportunity, the zombies lunged at Trey, pinning him against the wall. In this critical moment, Paula grabbed a nearby flagpole and decisively thrust it towards the zombies. Witnessing the struggling zombies impaled on the wall, they could hardly believe their eyes. However, before they could catch their breath, they realized chaos had erupted outside. More zombies were attacking the public. It was then that Trey began to consider if the appearance of the zombies was related to the drilling company. After all, during natural gas extraction, they used chemicals that contaminated the groundwater. Paula immediately countered, refusing to believe it. Because once something goes wrong with this company, she cannot dissociate herself from it. Regardless, the immediate concern was dealing with the zombies. Paula decided to head straight to City Hall to formulate a plan. Trey, however, insisted on rescuing his son Luke, who was at a lakeside party. Yet, as the mayor, Paula, after a brief deliberation, chose to go to City Hall. As they left, Lauren and the others emerged, accompanied by Mrs. French, an elderly lady in a wheelchair. Simultaneously, a horde of zombies breached the nursing home. They pushed Mrs. French back. But what about the old people in the home? Lauren initially wanted to leave, but Cam argued against abandoning the seniors. They devised a plan Lauren and Jai would create noise to attract zombies while instructing the elderly residents to lock their doors. Meanwhile, Cam, pushing Mrs. French, headed to the rear exit. When Lauren and Jai lured the zombies, they pressed a switch, closing an electric door and trapping the zombies inside. Lauren and Jai quickly followed, and the zombies pursued. The composed Mrs. French urged everyone not to panic, insisting they wait until all the zombies were inside. As the last zombie stepped in, Mrs. French immediately ordered the switch to be pressed. Unexpectedly, a zombie's arm got stuck in the door, preventing it from closing. Seeing this, they hastily escaped through the rear door, but Mrs. French chose to stay behind. It turns out that Mrs. French is terminally ill and has very little time left to live. And all she wants is to die in a way that makes her death worthwhile. You can kiss my saggy ass.